Hello, 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 and welcome to Sod Passion Projects. Today we'll be going over the Super Mario Brothers movie, which, uh, spoiler alerts down the line, but first, be sure to hit the like button, a subscribe button, and the bell if you'd be so kind. And starting off with the very title, uh, it really should just be called the Super Mario movie. Like, Luigi's there, but, uh, just held away, captured by Bowser. Uh, just by sheer unfortunate dumb luck on Luigi's part, falls into his domain when getting sucked up. Uh, the Isekai BTW, that's been in all the marketing, but still covering the basics, i.e. they started off in the normal human mundane world and got sucked into some fantasy nonsense. And Luigi drew the short st uh, straw. But anywho, anywho... Just, just not in a lot of the movie. Uh, I feel like Charlie Day was all right as Luigi. Just didn't have a lot to do with him because, again, out of most of the movie and the something interesting we'll get into later. But first, let's get into some stuff I really did like. Uh, Jack back, uh, Jack Black as Bowser was just a fantastic. They did a, f a wonderful job with the character, truly getting across, like, you know, dangerous, powerful, and, like, delusionally insane. Like, this is a, a man who extorts uh, Princess Peach by threatening to hurt a toad in order to get her to marry her, uh, him, for a shotgun wedding, and then thinks, like, in her honor, he'll just uh, sacrifice a bunch of uh, hostages as well, or prisoners. <laughs> Well, it's like, the whole reason you got up to the altar was to not do that very thing. This is wantonly self-destructive, yet he just he says it in such a an upbeat kind of way, where it's like, yeah, this seems like a, a great way to top off the ceremony. Which, I, like, he truly is kind of, out of, kind of, out of touch with reality. And as a villain, it is, like, the best thing. It is so wonderful. That is, like, casting for uh, Jack Black as Bowser... Pitch perfect, wonderful, only complaint, he didn't sing more. I would have loved a couple more songs in this. Hmm. Also, Kamek was pretty good as well. Uh, loved the interactions between Kamek and Bowser. Very decent for how many they were. This, I will say this film is uh, somewhat cluttered. You know, a few too many characters, thus not letting anyone get enough screen time for their own benefit, to really pop off as much again, have as much emotional impact. It feels like we're like two or three films in with the amount of characters in, when we haven't done a lot of the groundwork. This is the first one we're getting used to a lot of these characters, at least in terms of a cinematic perspective. And yeah, some people just don't get the time they need to, especially because we have to spend like 15 minutes in the human world to set up the whole isekai thing. Also, side note, they did nothing wrong. They should be suing those people for the hostile dog. He st Luigi stepped on a bloody treat and then tried to attack them. I, they, I, I'm sorry. They should be suing that rich couple for everything they're worth. Moving on. Moving on. Where were we? Oh, yes. Cluttered. Then we... Oh, yes. Next big thing we should probably talk about, which I did end up enjoying in the end... And I worried is a bit much. I wouldn't say that, but like a lot of people were talking about Prince, Princess Peach before the film, and like there isn't anything really wrong. They don't make it annoying in any way. It's a lot of fun to watch, and I dare say it's more of a critique about the stagnations, a stagnation of the Mario game, games under Shigeru Miyamoto, who seems to just hate any story and development. So I have to criticize him for that and the lack of unique, identifiable characters or variants of the various species in the Mario franchise. Again, we have a toad in this film who is like a main character or like a, a secondary character who is just referred to as toad, not something something or other toad, which uh frustrating. It's really frustrating. Anywho, again, they don't really do anything bad with that. They just show like uh, Princess Peach is a capable and competent fighter and leader and like has 
uh, what's it abnormally been so since a very young age, implying she aced the trial course, which they work in kind of like 2D levels in a unique and interesting way, uh, since the very first time. So you said she aced it the first try, which is, you know, you could do well, but like Mario, Genesis Qua had to take many, many tries to almost get there and for her to ace it. Like, that's... And also like, oh, I arrived here via warp pipe that then kind of died out. And uh, yeah, it's implying it's a big galaxy. So I think there's going to be something Genesis Qua special about her heritage down the line still. The, the main reason it, it works for me is, like, uh, it's not a competition between them. Again, like I say, they the whole trial course thing comes in to show, like, Mario is going to be capable enough to survive this adventure and not be a hindrance to Princess Peach. And, you know, he doesn't, like, ace it the very first time. He tries and tries and tries again and doesn't give up and gets better and better. Does, has a really impressive run, fails at the last hurdle, but Pe Peach is, like, close enough. You did a lot of improvement in, like, one night. So, let's go on this journey. But yeah, Peach is very good. Mario has been a, a plumber for several years in just New York City, so obviously isn't, like, the adventurer. But, again, over one night, he shows incredible improvement. And, you know, Peach is just supportive of that, while also still being a badass. Like, it is just the way. It's the... Diane Fockerton approach, where it's like, the good may be even better than what's at the male lead, but it's not like, well, not in terms of like the, hmm, the character's not in your, in the, ma the male lead or when the male characters face about it, they're just good and even supportive of the male character, and it's not trying to be like, oh, women can be great as well, like it's, oh, we're trying to make a statement piece in the 1960s and whatever the current year is. Not gonna date this video like that, but like, I feel like even like um that kind of stuff like in like 2012 or something would be kind of dated, you know? It's like, oh yeah, what a surprise! I'm a woman and can actually like kick some ass. It's like no, we've had characters like this for such a long time, you know? Uh, it, it's a whole thing, but nevertheless, the a broader context of like some lesser lesser works. To discuss at a later date when it comes to this film it's well handled peach is very competent has been doing this for a long time and mario quickly adapts and she's very supportive of that i like it and dare i say this would probably be how it's handled in uh, future adaptations before we go on to the biggest sticking point i have about the film let's just talk about like the few of the video game elements I like this this film a lot, but it feels at times, instead of a video game adapted into, well, a video game setting adapted into a fantasy world that uh, Mario then gets brought into, pretty much just like uh, bringing to life a video game world, which doesn't quite work at times. You know, like some of the things, especially so much so fast, I feel they... While uh, Nintendo was, like, able to save off some of Illumination's worst impulses, uh, Illumination was not able to do the same with Nintendo. I feel they crammed a little bit too much into it. Like, uh, I played my fair share of Mario Kart, but the blue shell thing was a little much, you know? Especially because it might just technically be, like, a kamikaze mission for that one turtle, but still... It's, I, I feel like we've established that regular mundane things can destroy the Rainbow Bridge in that scene where, like, everybody's rushing to try and get back to the uh, Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, Bowser finds out about this and ambushes them. I feel like if he has his flying port right there, he could just shoot, shoot the Rainbow Road, you know? Again, I played my fair share of Mario Kart, but it was just a bit, uh, I don't know, a bit shoehorned and a little bit cringe to have the blue shell reference in there. It's like, not not every, like, v air quotes, video game hammock has to be brought into the film or kind of works and makes sense. Tiny Mushroom, like, uh, has its benefits, and it, but it's treated more as a punishment in the film. But, yeah, would, again, have its uses at the very end of the film. Again, spoilers, when Bowser's eventually defeated, they use uh, a tiny one to shrink him down and imprison him, which is uh, very clever. But yeah, like, again, it's just like the, the shell, I had the 
moving with the platforms just seemed like a, a wild, wantonly dangerous um, safety hazard. Like, also, like, uh, speaking of safety hazards, at one point there is just, like, a floating series of blocks that Mario comments upon, which is fantastical. But at that point, why not just make a floating bridge, you know? Just, like, one sheet of blocks thick that clearly, in a real life, wouldn't be enough to support anything, but it's just there. And Mario's, like, scared of walking over there. It's just, like, um, a few things like that. And the blue shell. A bit much. Uh, uh, what's it? Donkey Kong being able to blow out a fire flower. Bit weak. Would have appreciated um, B Mario. But uh, I guess the Tanuki suit is more iconic, so... We see that late in the film. Uh, do, 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 do. Is there anything else I really want to bring up off the top of my head? Uh, I like the blue star. I really do appreciate some Nihilus and Kuma every now and again, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that quite a lot. Not for everybody, but it certainly spoke towards me. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, you know, actually, what I would really would have liked way more is the um, red star powers from Mario Galaxy. For the flying scene. That would have been a lot nicer than the Tanuki suit. And also would have hinted at things to come. So. Uh, yeah. I think that's pretty much. Just about everything. I could go into. I, I went into. Again. Could have done with some more unique variants. Of the things that weren't already. Previously established named characters. From. Uh, do, do, do other games. Just you know. Having the toad be his own thing, as opposed to just a generic toad that happens to be a secondary character throughout the film. Would have been nice, but uh, Shigeru Miyamoto really hates stories in these games. So there ain't a lot to go with. Oh well. Anywho, back onto the casting situation, where we come up to Mario with uh, Chris Pratt. Not great. Not great. As much as I do enjoy this film, I, at the end of the day, would recommend it. Would say I had a good time with it. It's a lot of fun. He is a weight around the film. Uh, uh, net, the film's neck. Like, if he, if anyone else was involved and it wasn't him, I feel the film would be that little bit better and score that little bit higher. He is just something of a weight around it. And I feel like, um, forgive me if I'm getting a bit too conspiracy blamed here, but I think just based on the time they did cast him, because like uh, looking at the rest of the cast, it's some pretty good people with unique, distinct voices for the most part, for better or worse. Uh, Seth Rogen, who uh, again, I'll spoil this now from uh, what's it, the casting section I read, was when approached about this, told them, I don't do voices, you're just going to get me, so. Fair enough, that was the film's choice to lean, either lean into it or assume ah, Seth Rogen's good enough for what we want to do with uh, Donkey Kong. Let's go with that. I can't blame him for that. It's not, not uh, necessarily anything wrong he does. Whereas, like, oh yeah, th this is a wonderful. The line everybody mocked and said, like, oh yeah, like all the foreign dubs did it way better with their, what's it, uh, accents. Uh, it... Uh, different language dubs, I should say. Uh, with the let's -a go, you know, it was very good in pretty much every other language except for Chris Pratt in English. And they cut the line from the film. They cut the line. Hey, they. They also have have a lot of like slow motion mamma mias, which uh, okay. But back to my conspiracy brain nonsense here. Just looking at films and assuming, like, the latest this thing was started in development and was, like, cast and all that, back, like, 2018, like, 2017 Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was out, and people were in love with Chris Pratt back then. He had just come off of that, the first Guardians of the Galaxy film, things like Passenger... Uh, the Lego movies, I believe the sequel, yet 2019, so that all would have played a part into it. But, 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 public opinion has now soured about Chris Pat. 
A, in terms of just like a box office thing, like not even in terms of like monetary stuff, just like him as an actor, character and all that. Uh, we see things like Jurassic World Dominion and uh, what's the other one? Just Jurassic World, I think. Uh, no, that's 2015. There was a third one in like 2023 or something. Those films, while the first was kind of mixed, some people did like it though. The sequels were very much uh, in poor taste for a lot of people. And if we look at you know, Avengers Infinity War, the uh, Star Lord character, were a kind of character assassinated, but uh, given the fact that, uh, a slight spoilers for that film as well, when they have Thanos dead to right, he gets emotional and just starts beating on him, which uh, Rex Mantis's mind control stuff she's doing, and he's able to break free and then go on to do all the endgame stuff. And a lot of people blame the character for that. Which, again, a lot of the appeal for Chris Pratt as an actor was coming from those films and that character, and then people were suddenly very mad at that character. Uh, oh, yes, it was Fallen Kingdom. People really didn't like those films uh, as well, which plays a factor into it. And uh, to do those... Oh, yeah, Onward, which, you know, same situation with uh, Chris Pratt's voice actor. And uh, it comes to some IRL stuff. You know, he is kind of getting religious in a way that people find weird and off-putting. When it, like describing both religion and hunting in the same breath, and it's like I haven't gone full deep dive into it because I don't want that to live rent free in my head, but it's kind of off putting. Like, uh, who knows? Maybe it was biblical decree that this happened today, but on my way in to see this movie, somebody was preaching about the second coming of Jesus Christ here in Ireland, you know, not like they were doing it, Ireland. And they were shouting this on a public street with a megaphone and everything in another language. Like, it's like if I was trying to convert people to the religion of the flying spaghetti monster in French, uh, France, uh, France? Yeah, there we are, I'm saying that word. And instead of speaking French or English, I just started preaching in Gaelic. It's like, why would I assume people know this language? And it's that kind of like, fanaticism about religion that people find off-putting that um, Chris Pratt has kind of been exuding as of late. So, not only is like the, the roles, unfortunately, that he has been getting through either no fault of his own or maybe some meddling behind the scenes we are unaware of. Well, it's, Star Lord has nothing to do with Chris Pratt. They just chose to do that with the character. You know, they, they've taken a dip. And his public image as a person, people are starting to just tug at the collars. And I, that was a weight on the film. That was something I, I weighed against it throughout my entire experience. Hence, anyone else other than Chris Pratt would have been a huge help. And uh, reading the wiki about uh, the film's casting and like any bits about that, I discovered this this lovely tidbit. Again, I like Charlie Day. I think his like normal speaking voice kind of works well with the scared, uh, scared cat Luigi. He just needed more screen time in the film to pop, which a lot of characters could have done with by probably cutting out a few more. But hey, anyhow, uh, Charlie Day originally voiced Luigi with a New York accent similar to the film Goodfellas during production. The accent was scrapped when directors told him it sounded too similar to the gangster film, uh, to which Day responded to the change with, all right, I think you're wrong, but fine. <laughs> so, yeah, that's fantastic, but moving on. Plot details were kept secret from actors during recording according to Day, who noted that he had to record his dialogue in many different ways, after which the director selected the version they believe would best be suited for the film. Like, I I feel that is, there's one thing, like, Avengers Endgame, that having plot details you want to get, keep keep, uh, keep secret. This is just the Mario movie. We, we, we know how it's going to go. We know how it's going to go. And I feel like this approach is just inherently self-destructive. 
characters need to know things, the most of state of the characters, and iterate upon that to deliver the best, uh, best performance they can, and like plot details and emotional beats are a key part of that. And if you're holding that secret for them and they're not going to know it and like play that into the film as it goes, play that into how they perform and act, like, okay, at this point in the film, he is supposed to be in this headspace and coming off of this and this will be coming up at some point during the scene. If you're just keeping them in the dark about so many uh, details, it's going to hinder the ability to deliver the best performance they can. Again, if it's like, what was it, um, Tom Hiddleston or do, 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 no, 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 uh, not Toby McGuire. Who is the Spider-Man actor? Let's look that up. Who was like notorious for just being unable to what's it uh, keep secrets? What's it, Tom Holland? There we are. That's why I got all confused. You know, maybe in that instance, it is worth, like, chaperoning him or, like, having those alternate scenes so they're not entirely sure because they, you know, have a history of leaking. But, again, for the Mario film, where we, it's like, oh, is Bowser actually going to finally win in his first cinematic debut? You know, as opposed to, like, literally the plot of every other Mario game where he always loses? Who knows? I think everybody knew going into the film he was... A cruising poor bruising. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just found that like a fascinating detail because there has been some debate about it. About like, um, I, think I believe I read earlier, Terra Strong criticizing Chris uh, Pratt's casting, about like Hollywood not respecting trained and professional voice actors. I feel like Jack Black has like done it often enough. I think he does qualify, even if he doesn't do like air quote voices, he still is a voice actor, just um, through experience and like previous roles, and also just have a unique, distinctive voice that is nice to hear. Even if it is just his default speaking voice. Same for Charlie Day, whereas like, again, Chris Pat is a you know, fine actor, but uh, in terms of like a distinctive voice to be lent to a character? Not really. Not really, especially for, like, Mario. Uh, which is a real shame. Still, 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 the film as a whole was a lot of fun. I don't know if it quite deserves, like, those incredibly low ratings from a lot of critics, but should it be certified fresh based on the fan response? No, no, I feel fans could, could do with being a little, a little more critical demanding a little bit better from this franchise, so, like, subsequent spin-offs and sequels up the quality and course-correct where needed. But still, this, th this film did a lot of things right, and I am very delighted to have uh, seen it. But uh, now I believe that's my whole rant out of the way. So, comment down below what your thoughts, what you agree with me on, what you disagree with me on, your own thoughts and interpretations of the film, and, uh, yeah, have a fantastic day. What else? What else? Uh, I have another channel, uh, Sod Pageant Gaming, where I've played two uh, various Wario games in the past and will do so again in the future. Uh, to date, I think I've got um, Genesis Qua, Super Mario 64, and Super Mario Galaxy on there. So be sure to check that out. Now, it's time to say... Also, oh, if you haven't already, like button and uh, subscribe and bell. Thank you. Now it's time to say ta ta, Vida Zane, until we meet again. Bye bye, my pretties.